Look at my happy boy feeling so much better. You gonna eat some grass jacks? How you doing, big guy? Yeah, what do you think about it? That's pretty good. You should eat some grass, actually. I did have to cinch up his new harness pretty darn tight there. My little baby kitty. Him such a good boy. Yep. You got the green light to travel, buddy. You got a, you got a clean bill of health. We just got to stay on your meds, okay? Yep, because pills are good, huh? Pills are good. Pills are good. Hey everyone, Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. And we're back on the road. Well, we're in a parking lot right now, but we are back on the road. Uh, tonight will be my last night in Illinois. But you know, I'm really looking forward to the future, especially this trip with some new stops. Uh, we're gonna sleep here overnight and then we'll continue this video on in the morning and get into a new area of Indiana, which I am so excited about. So uh, thanks for joining me guys. I will be uploading this video with some Nomad internet. There's a link below in the video description if you need some mobile unlimited internet. You guys wanna see how Jax is doing? Let's check him out. Hey Jax, hey Tara. How you feeling Jax, a little better maybe? You ready to you ready to chillax? Yeah, should we get the harness on? We're gonna have to tighten that harness because you've lost so much weight, my little 11 pound kitty. We'll get the harness on then we'll eat some grass. Okay, he's such a good boy eating his good healthy foods. Such a good boy. He's like, man, I know you hid medicine in this food, Dad. You're right, I did. But it's good for you. Tara's, how's yours? No medicines in yours, right? Yeah. You know, I feel like I feel like Tara's getting a little chunky. <laughs> Get a little chunky there, Tara. It's all good. It's all good. Him's a good boy. Enjoy your dinner. Keep eating all the medicines. Good job. So remember what I said in my next video about organizing, cleaning, and preparing the RV? Yeah, I did five loads of laundry, and, and for the last few days, I just had all my clean laundry on the bed back there unfolded. So... I'm gonna take care of that. We are going to watch the sunset here and try to have a peaceful night even though we're really close to the highway and, and truckers using their engine brakes. It's very loud, but we'll see how it goes. Hopefully I can get refreshed and then we'll get into Indiana coming right up. got quite a bit of traffic here as uh, night fell at Cracker Barrel and yeah the semi trucks they're they're really super loud I don't think everyone's staying because there's a few boats and now that that RV's leaving right now so not everybody's gonna stay the night Cracker Barrels are usually not a top option for RVers traveling but I find them so much better than a Walmart because like I went in there earlier and had an awesome uh, chicken dinner their Sunday home style special with, with two sides. It's boneless fried chicken. It's so good and uh, Just a little different than Walmart kind of mixes things up and it's free I mean except for the, the dinner the meal that you pay for but yeah I'm gonna pack it up tonight and we'll wake up in the morning and head on over into Indiana Well, good morning everyone. That is a very muddy river off to our right there we got rained on pretty bad last night, and that is the reason why I didn't get very good sleep last night. Not because of the highway noise, but because of the fact that I had to wake up at 2 a.m., shut all my windows, turn off all my fans. I had to shut off my main fan exhaust up top, and it got hot in the RV. Right, here we go. Welcome to Indiana Crossroads of America, Lincoln's boyhood home. So yeah, it got... It's no fun for me when it rains at night, especially when it's still warm. Like, it's still 80-some degrees today. And there might be a chance of showers later. Just have to wait and see. Uh, we're in Indiana. Uh, in about five miles, we're going to get off the interstate. We're going to go find something quirky. Yeah. All right, come on, rain. Hold off just a little bit longer. You can, you can rain all night once I get parked for the day. There have been signs all over the interstate and billboards and stuff letting me know what's here in the middle of indiana you guys know how much i love christmas i am a christmas aholic how about the hometown 
of Kris Kringle Santa Claus. There's actually a place in this country called Santa Claus, Indiana, and apparently the entire town embraces the Santa Claus Christmas feel, and it's right down this road right here. I cannot wait. I love Christmas. It makes me so happy. Santa, you're looking good there, buddy. Also, I am noticing some leaves finally starting to fall on the ground. Possibly, possibly autumn's finally on the way here in the Midwest. Just met some subscribers here. They're also visiting Santa Claus here, and they're hoping that Jax is doing well. Drive safe, guys. So the town is really, really cool. I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit. We've got, what is that, a Holiday Foods over there. I see a pizza place, the Santa Claus Christmas store and gift store. I'm sure they got a magnet in there. Uh, there's visitor information, another Santa Claus. But first, we gotta go check out the most famous post office in the country. Now, uh, Santa Claus, Indiana has a population under 2,000. However, they draw over 2 million visitors a year. And it's not just because they have a Christmas-themed town. They also, on the other side over here, have the country's oldest theme park, Holiday World. It is the oldest theme park in the country. And it's funny because it's nestled in between a bunch of cornfields. It was actually established nine years before Disneyland in California. And uh, it's just very strange that it exists out here in the middle of a tiny, tiny little town. But this tiny post office here in Santa Claus, Indiana, there's the zip code, Santa's holding it, 47579. This post office receives more mail than any other small city of its size because every letter to Santa Claus gets redirected to the city of Santa Claus, Indiana, and it comes to this tiny post office. There's the address if anyone needs to write a Christmas letter to Santa Claus officially. Uh, it does say that this one's not in use outside, so we're gonna go inside, check it out. So this is the Santa Claus Indiana Post Office. There's another room that's usually open, but it's closed right now. But they do uh, accept and I guess display some of the, the lost letters to Santa Claus also. But there's where you uh, drop your mail to Santa Claus. I'll write the old fat man a letter and uh, send it to him. I'll let him know I've been a good boy this year. And so is Jackson Tara. All right, I'm going to go check out the Visitor Information Center. But I really want to find a magnet. And they might have one in Santa's Ornament Shop. All right, we'll go check out all the uh, ornaments in here. All right, we're inside. They do have a lot of custom ornaments and they're playing Christmas music in the background. Oh yeah. This may be the kind of place you would see Nomadic Fanatic retire in. Christmas year round. And even they're burning some pine candles and stuff. Oh my gosh, this place is huge. Look at the whole wall up there on the shelf. A bunch of ornaments and stuff. And they have a huge helicopter up there with a cow flying around. He will zoom in. That is great. I'm sure they got a magnet here. Wow, look at the all the different Christmas town decorations and stuff. <sighs> all these detailed little houses that are lit. Wow, I had no idea there were so many of these. Wait a minute, I see a trailer. I see a neat little trailer. Could be yours for $144. Hey again, Santa Claus. Jeez. Oh, all these cool uh, night lights that light up that are Christmas themed. Wow. All right, and the Merry Christmas store, which also has some Halloween stuff. Yeah, I guess we got to get through Halloween first, right? Got to gotta give Halloween a little bit of love, okay. Well, unfortunately, after searching the entire store for a magnet that says Santa Claus, Indiana on it, I went to customer service and they did say that they are 100% out of stock of Santa Claus magnets. So I may just get something else, a different kind of magnet. Too bad that tree's not lit up. That would be cool. But I may just get another magnet that symbolizes my stop in Santa Claus, Indiana. Because it's pretty cool here. All right, let's go find a couple other things here in Santa Claus, Indiana. There might be another museum that's open. Um, I'm going, well, I was thinking about parking the RV and taking Black Betty, but it is sprinkling and raining and the motorcycle is not gonna work all the time. That's okay. So bummer, behind me is the Lake Rudolph Campground and RV Resort. 
and I pulled in because it looks like they've got lots of spaces open. It looks like they only got about one quarter capacity in the campground over there. And she said, absolutely, we do have some openings. It's $138 a night and a three night minimum. I'm not the guy. Uh, it looks like you could use my business for one night, even at $138, I could walk around and see everything. But when she said three night minimum, 500 bucks, I, I'm not the guy. That's okay, I'll just park in a public free spot instead and walk around Santa Claus. See, everything's Santa related, even Santa's storage, although some of these places are just taking advantage of the opportunity, but I like it. That's right, Santa Claus even has its own police, the Santa police. <laughs> Oh, nice. And then in front of the town hall of Santa Claus, Indiana, they have a replica of the first, the very first Santa Claus statue, I guess. This is just a replica. There's another one supposed to be somewhere else in the city. Look at this. Even their benches say Santa Claus on them. See that? Santa Claus benches. That's cool. All right, looks like I have one last chance to find a Santa Claus magnet here at the Santa Claus Candy Castle. I love what they have done with the place as the rain is now actually picking up. It's probably time to go inside and check it out. Interesting little sign out front here. It says, welcome to America's first themed attraction. So not theme park, but Santa's Candy Castle established 1935 is America's first themed attraction. Very interesting. Oh my gosh, you walk in and they've got a monster selection of different themed Pez dispensers. And of course they have a couple Mickey Mouses that I don't have. I have to have that one. I love the blue hat Mickey. And I do have this one. Score for my collection. Then our options are the full castle experience or shortcut for drinks. I don't think we need to go into the castle, right? Okay, lots more candy. Weird. Huh. This appears to be, yep, this is a jelly bean section. That's definitely a candy castle, I'll give them that. Oh my gosh, the best gummy bears in the world. I, I took you guys to the Albanese Gummy Bear Factory. Actually, I believe that was here in Indiana. I could be wrong, I think it was though. Ooh, they have a monster, okay, okay. Hang on, we're not done. One more stop. Good thing I asked. He had some really good tips on this place and I almost missed a big stop here in Santa Claus, Indiana. The Santa Claus Museum and Village is open only on Saturday and Sunday. Yes. There's even a couple things to see outside before we go in, but first, the original Santa Claus post office established 1856 is here. It's been moved. This is the original one. It says they're open. Ooh, creakly old door. Wow. Okay, these are some really old wooden desks. It looks like they even left us some paper where we can write to Santa. Dear Santa, please make Jack's better. Your friend, nomadic, fanatic. Thank you, Santa. All right, here we go. Last chance for a magnet. The Santa Claus Museum only open Saturdays and Sundays currently. Look at this. We finally found a Santa Claus Indiana magnet. And that's the... Uh, statue that's out front, so I think that's gonna be the winner. So there's some information here in the room talking about how Santa Claus got its name, and there's a little write-up right here that says it was originally known as Santa Fe. And then in the 1850s, their application was rejected because it was too close to Santa Fe. That's funny. So yeah, why not just call it Santa Claus in 1856. They're showing a little uh, film here on the TV of them moving the original post office also. That's pretty cool. Ho, 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 there's Santa Claus. Who's ready for Christmas? I know it's not even Halloween yet, but I'm ready for Christmas. It makes me feel so much better and happier about things. Jax, man, you are looking so much better. So much better, and I know you're loving this all-canned food diet, huh? So yeah, Dad, I should've got sick a lot earlier. <laughs> no, we want you to be good. He's a good boy. Yeah. What do you think about everything, Tara? You want a toy to play with? 
and a little kitty toy to play with? You should get it. That's a pretty good get. You can put your leg down. Show some class. You are a lady after all. <laughs> Want a different toy? Want one with a bell? Do you like bell toys? But Is that a better one? You should get it. Good get. Good get. You can get Jax to play with you? Yeah, bring him down. All right, well, we're starting to put magnets down here because I'm filling up the top, but we'll put my Santa Claus magnet right there. All right, just got parked over here at Walmart. Like I said, the rain's been, been light. It's just been ongoing a little bit all day. I'm really glad that I have the trailer for uh, Black Betty because I don't have to worry about her getting dirty and muddy and having to worry about polishing it. You know, Roxy the Rebel was okay on the back, but this bike I care a little bit more about. So I'm glad that I can just keep it enclosed. And when it's raining, I don't get to ride it. Uh, but then again, the whole first five years of my life on the road in Tilly, I didn't have a tow vehicle at all. So we, we will use Black Betty hopefully in the next video. I'm gonna get settled and I'm gonna break out some of the boxes that are under the bed because I can't wait any longer. Tara, Tara, are you excited about your first Christmas? Okay, well I gotta break the news to everybody, okay? Before you guys say anything crazy about me putting up a Christmas tree in October, before we've even experienced Thanksgiving and Halloween, it's my life, guys. <laughs> and you guys know what makes me happy, so, um, I set up my Christmas tree in the RV next to my leg lamp and uh, I've got all of my neat ornaments collected and uh, gifted to me since I've been in an RV. So every ornament here, I have either gotten on the road or has been a, a gift by someone to me on the road. They all bring back awesome memories and make me a little homesick sometimes, but that's okay. Cause I get to take it with me on the road everywhere I go. And uh, this being Tara's first Christmas with me, technically it should be her second, but first Christmas with me, little goober, uh, we're gonna have to wait and see how she does with the ornaments. That's why I'm not putting any below where the NES controller is right there. But hey, in my defense, at least I've got the Halloween lights programmed on the, on the Twinkly app right now. So we're doing Halloween lights. I'm gonna wait to do the Christmas lights later, but it's up. You're gonna see it in my videos now and I really don't care. Don't hate, just live your own life and be happy. You only get one chance, guys. I really enjoyed Santa Claus, Indiana. We're gonna do a little bit more Indiana in my next video and then move on over into another state on this crazy fall trip. So thanks for joining me, guys. Jax, Tara, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.